Hello boys and girls, uh, Brad the Guitologist here with another exciting video coming at you. Uh, in this video we are going to commit a cardinal sin, uh, perhaps the cardinal sin as far as vintage uh, things go. We are going to modify this mid-1960s blackface fender. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please stick around. This is a, a mid-1960s fender blackface baseman. The customer who owns this has uh, had this in my shop before uh, for some repair. If you'll recall, this is the same amp that was in the recent video about the output tubes uh, red plating. Uh, we solved that problem and solved all the, uh, you know, the basic electrical problems. Uh, but the owner is not quite satisfied with the tone and has asked uh, that I go in and uh, do some uh, work on this to try to uh, bring out some of the overdrive uh, potential that's in this thing. I told him I would be willing to do that and said that uh, one approach would be to rebias the output tubes uh, so that it lessened uh, the headroom a little bit so it would break up a little easier at a little bit lower volumes. Uh, however, this amp is a fixed bias amplifier. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get in here and convert this from a fixed bias, uh, which is something that Fender did a lot in the blackface and silverface era, uh, to a cathode bias. Uh, which is something that is more like what they did in the Tweed era. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this blackface baseman and we're going to give it the output or, or more of a close uh, resemblance of the output of a Tweed era baseman or twin or pro or some, something like that. So Actually, before we go any further, let me explain a little uh, more closely what we're doing. Um, and first we're going to look at the model uh, the specific model of this basement amp. Let me get some light up in here so you can see what we're going to look at. Um, this is the tube chart over here. If you'll notice at the very tip top of the tube chart up there, you'll see AA165 right up there at the top. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not because it won't focus very well, but AA165 on that tube chart at the very top of it, that indicates the model for this specific schematic. Uh, sometimes, according to some people that I know, uh, they say that uh, these get a bit hazy uh, in the silver, early Silverface era. They kind of used up some of the tube charts from the earlier ones. Uh, but this one should be accurate. The AA165 is what we need to look for. And here on this website, this is uh, ampwares.com. If we go to ampwares.com, and other websites will have this information too, but this is a pretty good one because they collate everything together. Uh, you'll see here, here are the different schematics uh, for some of the different basemen. Uh, AA165 is the one that we want. Um, and this one on the output you will see uh, 6L6GC right here, the cathodes. This element right here, that little hook right there is a cathode. Here's another cathode. Both of those are tied directly to ground in this schematic. Uh, that is not what we want for uh, for the really good kind of tweety uh, breakup and response. Well, what we're going to do is is uh, remove uh, this stuff, and there's a little tap right here for the negative bias supply. So we're not going to use this negative bias supply anymore. Basically, we're just going to cut this stuff off um, and leave it in the amp, uh, but not use it. All right, one thing you'll notice about the basement is that the normal channel and the base channel are different. The normal channel only has one, two stages of gain using uh, two halves of a 7025 tube and then it goes on to the phase inverter after that and then to the output. So it mixes in from here over. The base instrument channel, however, has one, two, three stages of gain before uh, getting to the output. So actually the base instrument channel is a higher gain channel than the normal channel. And also, you're, if you're doing some counting here, you'll notice there's one tube, two tubes, three, four, five, and a half. So where's the other half? Well, the other half is unused. See those three pins right there that are unused? That's a pretty huge potential right there. Now, of course, that's going to mean that this thing is uh, you know, going to be, it will have been obviously modified, um, but that is a, that's a real, 
that's a real uh, potential right there to bump up the gain of the of the preamp especially for the normal channel if we wanted to route the normal channel through that unused half of the 7025 what I might do here is pause and get with the customer and see if that's something that he would be interested in doing because all it would really take is for me to come off of this 220k uh, and basically drop in the next stage right here all right a couple of things have occurred to me uh, while poking around this amp so far uh, number one this amp has been pretty uh, heavily modified the tone stack uh, those capacitors right there uh, and some of the other associated components have either been removed from the circuit or changed. Uh, these two capacitors here that are in the tone stack originally would have been 0.1 uh, capacitors and they have been changed to 0.022s and I think I know why. Um, that's a It's a pretty common thing for uh, text to come in and uh, mess with tone stacks on basements to try to make them more like a Marshall JTM 45. Here is the tone stack on the basement right here. You see a 500 picofarad into the treble, a 0.1 capacitor into the bass control, and another 0.1 down here into a 2.7K resistor for, for the fixed uh, mids okay and then you have a deep switch down here as well with a 0.1 capacitor on it so this is the standard tone stack for the basement uh, the JTM 45 schematic shows an altogether different uh, tone stack first of all the tone stack is pushed a little bit later in in the amp you notice the basement was near the input after the first gain stage. This tone stack is is uh, after one, two gain stages in the JTM 45. Excuse me, two, it'll be two gain stages depending on what channel you're in. Two gain stages, one, two, and also a um, cathode follower, uh, a DC coupled stage here that's pushing all of this stuff uh, but you notice the 0.02 and the 0.02 well that's all well and good but the problem is you'll notice another thing uh, here's a 1 meg pot a 250k pot and down here a 25k pot for the mids uh, so we have 250 1 meg 25 in the stack whereas on the uh, basement we had our pots are uh, 250, 250 and a 2.7k so um, I have a bit of a an executive decision to make do I want to go through all the trouble of changing the see this is what you get into man when you start working on uh, stuff and somebody wants something specific and they want it modified and this customer has a as a gig tomorrow that he wants to take this to. He's going out of town, I think, and he wants to take this with him to play. And I don't, right now, I don't know if that's going to happen or not because um, we have these little decisions we need to make. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to basically rebuild the entire tone stack, um, you know, that's going to be more money as well. So I, I need to call the customer a second time. But the other thing I wanted to discuss uh, while we're here is uh, something else that I ran across and that is the realization that when he brought me this thing he had these channels jumpered so I called him up and I asked him hey man um, you know are you using this jumper and he said uh, yep that's how he usually runs it well the problem with jumpering channels um, on this model basement the AA165 is this in the AA165, you have, uh, of course, the two channels. You have a bass channel and a normal channel. Well, the, the bass instrument channel has one, two, three gain stages before uh, the phase inverter and output. Okay? The normal channel has one, two gain stages. 
so the way this works is your guitar signal or whatever signal comes in and it's it's um, it's in a certain phase so that is you know the first upswing is is maybe going up on the sine wave if you imagine a sine wave going up and down up and down like this the sine wave goes up uh, whenever you hit a note and it goes back down up and down up and down like that uh, once it goes through a gain stage so when it goes from the grid of a tube up to the plate of a tube uh, what was positive now becomes negative and what was negative now becomes positive it flops so any gain stage is going to flip uh, is going to flip that face so it comes your guitar signal comes in here to the to the first stage of this bass it flips the phase at the same time it's coming in down here if you got the channels jumpered it's also flipping the phase so the signal comes in this way hits the first gain stages on both and it flips comes through again hits the second gain stage and flips this one continues through to this point but this one gets flipped again so if you're jumping channels you're actually running these channels out of phase uh, so that's going to just kill your tone. You're you're going to be um, canceling out, you know, a lot of your signal by doing that. So uh, and I informed him of this, but there's a fix for this, uh, and it's a looks like a pretty elegant one. And I don't know if anyone else has uh, done this before or not, but I think I may try it here for the first time. And he did agree agree to this since this amp is already. Um, molested anyway. Someone's already been in here and, and have started doing mods on it anyway. We may as well try this. This might be something that um, that he will like. We have a gain stage that is not used. So we have one half of a 12AX7 here that's not used. So what I'm thinking is on our normal channel, which is this channel, uh, we may use three gain stages. That way he will be able to jumper channels that will give him uh, more gain as he's basically paralleling uh, those two channels together and mixing them back together and also he will be able to use uh, each channel's uh, controls in, in the tone stack so uh, what we might do is is wire it up uh, where we have that extra gain stage uh, and it, I'm also again gonna have to call him about what to do on this so let's Let's call him and see what he wants to do and we'll come back. All right, so I've spoken to the customer and here is the game plan. We're gonna take the base channel um, and since it's already halfway to uh, Marshall specs anyway, we're gonna go ahead and change the tone stack of this uh, all the way to sort of a Marshall JTM 45 style tone stack. And we'll just basically change the mid-range resistor to you know like a 15K or something like that to basically put the Marshall um, you know, mid-range, straight up and down, more or less. So that's what we're going to do on this channel. On the second channel, uh, we are going to revert it back to Fender stock, uh, but we're also going to add this additional gain stage. So basically, what he'll have is he'll have um, he'll have a souped-up normal channel that still has the Fender tone stack, and he'll have uh, the bass channel, which will be turn into a Marshall JTM 45 tone stack. Um, so he'll be able to jumper these channels if he wants also uh, to give him more flexibility. And if he gets an ABY pedal and goes in the front end like that, he'll have the choice of either or or both. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move, um, this is the second, this is the first V1 tube for the second channel. Well, I say V1, it's actually V3, but uh, these are the first two stages um, of gain for the second channel. We're going to move these one of the first one we're going to move over to here so these will have to come off uh, pins one two and three will come off and be moved over to here pins one two and three uh, then we will move these over to this side um, or we may actually put these at the end so yeah that would be easier so we'll, what we'll do is take one two three off and move them over to here and then we will use after it comes out of here, we will go into here then, and then onto the phase inverter. All right, I've gotten a little bit further along, and on this uh, tube stage, um, needed a one meg resistor to ground, so I've run a wire over to here uh, to get this one meg resistor over here to ground. Um, we are going to add a capacitor just directly from here over to this stage, and then coming off of the 
plate on this stage, uh, we're going to need somewhere to tie in our um, bypass capacitor and resistor um, for biasing that tube. So what I've done over here, there was originally a little terminal. Uh, so I've taken it off over here because the previous tech had bypassed whatever was there in the beginning. I'm not really sure. Um, so what I've done is move this screw over to here. And what that is is a trans transformer mount screw. So I've moved that transformer mounting screw over to here. And in this one, I'm going to put this so we'll have a place to uh, tie in our components. Okay, so here's part of the modification complete. Um, this is the second channel, the normal channel with uh, three stages of gain instead of just the two. I haven't done anything to the tone stack or anything on that channel. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that one might even still be the same. I think these are the tone uh, caps right here, but at any rate, uh, we'll look at all that in a little bit. But essentially what we have here is we have the input coming in and now instead of going to this half of the 12AX7, this 12AX7 is going to this the first half of V2. Uh, coming out of the out of V2 and it's going to uh, this half of this stage um, or a actually excuse me it's going through the uh, tone controls and then it's coming back and coming here uh, then it's coming through this cap over to this stage you can see that there and then it's coming out of that this is the uh, bypass capacitor and resistor that we have on this little uh, this little terminal here that's being grounded um, and then it's coming out of that or it will um, or did I already do that yeah it's coming out of that and then going here to this 220k resistor and then on to the phase inverter all right, we've got this thing hooked up to a little test speaker down here off camera, and uh, we're gonna fire it up slowly on the Variac and just test out the second channel. For some reason, we have nothing. I'm not really sure what that's all about. All right, here's what, how, the, why that first test failed. Uh, because if you'll notice here, here's pin six, which is a plate, and I have signal going to the next stage, but I forgot to feed this plate a uh, voltage supply. So I've got to get a, got to get some voltage to this, and to do that, we're going to come off of this point back here. Uh, and this this is going to be uh, supplier voltage for that stage. We'll come off of that with a 100k resistor and uh, feed this stage with it. All right, we have our voltage supply sorted out for that stage. Now let's uh, let's try it again. Okay, so something's obviously not right with that. What have we done? Let's see. Well, I just spent about the last 20 minutes or something, uh, something like that, probing around in this thing, searching for uh, whatever's causing this problem. Basically, uh, uh, the output's just getting overloaded and it's just sounding like crap. Um, and the output was kind of intermittent, in and out. On this channel so what I finally did was just retrace my steps I what did I change then and retrace my steps going through and it turns out that resistor right there that I put in I mean look at it that's two that's a two meg resistor instead of a 1500 man it's just been one of those one of those weeks um, Jeez, what a stupid thing. See, the, I have my uh, stuff organized in one of these little organizers, and for however it happened, I don't know, but 
instead of being over here where the where my two and three megs are it was over here where my 1500s are so I just grabbed it out and put it in without even looking at the value what a stupid thing to do okay hear that that's oscillation oscillation that's a low frequency oscillation that's probably happening as a result of too much gain now watch this when I turn the uh, volume knob up just just way too much way too much gain or something's going on so I need to retrace my steps yet again and see uh, what I may have done wrong now at least that that tube is biased correctly I do have the correct resistor value in there now but something else is definitely wrong Okay, I've been poking around in this amp some more and I've noticed some anomalies that distinguish it from the AA165 blackface. Um, and I've noticed that the feedback, for instance, has a 47K resistor into a 0.1 capacitor. Uh, and that is these two components right here. 47 into a 0.1. Uh, interestingly, the in this example uh, the 22 this 22 K and this 47 K are connected underneath um, and in this schematic the a B 165 they are not I don't know if that's maybe that's a misprint I'm not really sure it sure doesn't look like a mis misprint looks like it stops right there so that's an anomaly. It's, it looks to me like this is a transition amplifier. It looks like somebody at the factory was playing around maybe and when they made this thing. I, I really don't know. It's, um, it's a strange one for sure. I, it's already been worked on um, and it's just got some weird anomalies in it. You'll notice also on the uh, basement AB165 the normal channel stops after this after the second stage there and gets tied back in uh, to this part of the circuit instead of after this in the AA165. So the AB you can actually jump jumper channels and that's the silver face version where you can jumper channels without uh, phase canceling. Uh, the AA165 uh, blackface you can't do that if it's a true followed by the schematic AA165 all right after a lot of playing around with this circuit uh, here's my final walkthrough on the first channel uh, the base channel um, I've pretty much reverted it back to stock uh, they had heavily modified this channel and um, and made some modifications to this uh, deep switch things like that and I've put all that stuff back to stock values um, and pretty much that entire channel is uh, now back to stock values with the exception I think of this one capacitor here I think that's that's not the right value but um, but it sounds pretty good as is I might leave that in there um, let's see the second channel okay uh, of course we added that extra gain stage uh, up front and this channel has been pretty much marshalized more or less um, what I have done uh, I've changed the tone stack I moved the capacitors that were down here on this end over into this position those point zero two twos uh, so it's a lot more martially now the base control I did not change so um, there's actually a lot more roll off on the the low end uh, which is kinda good in a way because uh, without doing that this thing is really really bassy um, the various stages have also been changed I've added a couple of grid stopping resistors right there Oh, excuse me. There's one right there. Uh, there's another one right down there. Of course, I had to add the 100K resistor to feed that um, tube right there with some voltage because we stole it to go elsewhere. Um, 
let's see, what else? The tone stack, or excuse me, not the tone stack, but the um, biasing. Uh, this is now a, let's see, what did I put in here? A 2.7K resistor on that first, um, on one of these stages. It's not the first stage, but it's one of them. Uh, this other one here, I've left it with the uh, 1000 or the 1K and added a point uh, point 0.5 capacitor to the yeah to the to one of those stages, um, and that's more or less it. We may uh, do some more tweaking on this, but uh, you know essentially that's that's about it. Also changed that resistor for the fixed mid-range on this channel as well. And I think we're about ready to give this thing a demo.
Thank <laughs> you.